due to the coronavirus making videos has been quite easy due to all the airsoft fields being closed and of course we have been making been able to make gameplay videos however during this uh, hard time I spent quite quite time and money into my loadout and in today's video I'll be showing you everything that I'm carrying to the, in the future to the field. First off I'm going to show you my weapon. So this is my custom two-tone HPA build LVOAC from Crytek. So basically you see me rocking this weapon when it was still an AEG being a high speed uh, build but um, during this time I've invested some money into a Polar Star Kytera and I've put some other internals in uh, like a pro in hop up and more and also most importantly a lot of retro arms parts and PTS parts like this PTS EPGC stock, EPGC grip, both 10, and this Crytek buffer tube, and uh, I've got some PTS sights which I got from my KWA TK45. I've had make a made a video about it. Uh, this is my AIM XPS2 replica, it's also two tone, just like my build. And it's just a basic holographic sight. Uh, I really like it. I haven't quite been able to test it in the field, but that will be coming up soon. Uh, my mags are GNG GR16 mags. I've got like seven of it on every part, almost of my body, not on the back, but almost everywhere. And um, like I said, I'm rocking the Polar Star Criteria which is a semi-automatic HPA system and it works really well. Uh, the m most important reason I changed to the system was, during, was due to the AEG system not being reliable enough and I had a lot of problems with it, with upgrading stock Spesna arms, but I've learned from my mistakes and now I've got a good weapon. Next up is my pistol. So, you've seen me already make a video about this. This is my custom Tokyo Marui High Kappa 5.1 pistol. Uh, it's almost entirely upgraded with mostly as masterpiece parts. Some maple leaf parts. The inner barrel, I guess, I'm not sure. And uh, my old Armor Works trigger, I just added it on because it looks way cooler. Uh, custom grip I stippled myself during the lockdown. Uh, what do I have? got more? There's a few buffers, cow cow, plastic nozzle, the brass airsoft masterpiece hop up. Works really well compared to my maple leaf one, but I'm still using the maple leaf inner barrel and it's not bad. It does the job well, I can still hit targets from a certain amount of um, distance. And for the rest, I've also got this gold match frame. I got from Tony because he had a gold match, but uh, we ex I exchanged it with my 4.3 frame. A lot of things have happened with this pistol, but I'm rocking it, I love it. Maybe hoping to buy another frame because my holster I'm using um, isn't that quite well for the looks of my pistol as it ruins the looks a bit but uh, yeah that's my pistol next off is my helmet um, I've been rocking this helmet since summer break it's an FMA fast helmet I got from ASMC I'm going to put a link in the description from the website where I bought it uh, it works really well I adjusted it to the inside my preferences with the padding you could remove some and I did remove some. On the front you've got a GoPro session with a GoPro mount I got from Airsoft Store also going to put a link in the description. Works really well I've had this camera already since 2017 it does a decent job but I'm hoping in the future to buy another camera due to the quality not being that well. On the side I've got a French flag and my ear mores. A uh, really good ear pro um, protects my ears really well, also for B from BB impact, but also from loud noises and uh, like bombs, uh, loud pistols. Like even when I rack my slide for my pistol, 
uh, it cancels out the noise. And I even got this microphone attached to it with a cable if I'm going to have a PTT and a radio, but I, I don't have one yet. But it will be for the future. On the top, I've got the custom webbing I made from uh, Tasmanian Tiger pouches I had and an FMA counterweight where I put a reflective patch in it. Those are mostly for NVG users, but I like Anthony doesn't have any NVGs, I don't have NVGs, Lucas neither, and I'm sure no one at the field uses NVGs and CQB fields, so pretty useless, but it was a nice aesthetic to my helmet. Next up is my face protection, these are X800 goggles with a mesh mask attached to it. I painted it to like Norwich ones, but I'm not a big fan of him anymore, but I'm still using it. Uh, the glasses of the goggles have been damaged due to humidity. They, they are quite decent against fog compared to the Falcon Sierra goggles and more, but um, that's mostly because of having a big gap in here. Don't worry, BBs won't go, come through it, but still. Um, it's a it's a decent, these are decent goggles, they're for about 15 euros or dollars, it's quite the same at the moment. And um, I've been using these goggles for a few years already now, but I'm hoping to look for others which will protect my face a bit more. And an accessoire I'm using is my Invader Gear Black Lava. Uh, doesn't do much, uh, but keeping my face warm and also my head, ears, everything, and uh, it also makes my uh, mouth covered. Next up is my plate carrier. This is a Tasmanian Tiger LC or laser cut plate carrier. All my gear is in Coyote Brown. Don't ask me why. If I could, I would have done it in black. Uh, I really like this plate carrier. It's not a cheap plate carrier. It costs about 200 euros and um, it fits very well to the body, really comfortable, it has some padding inside and uh, I've put a pair of Emerson replica oh wait, dummy plates from uh, my other big area which was uh, my Emerson GPC and I prefer this design due to the shoulder straps being closer to my neck and it, so it doesn't make my shoulder straps come over my shoulder as I'm not that buff, if you can call it that way. And um, I've put a lot of pouches on it, I'm going to start off the front. These are my uh, triple 5.56 Invader Gear uh, Mac pouches, I use them for my GNG Macs. Easy concept, not, not much to say about it. Uh, here on the under, at the bottom, not that handy, I've got this Tasmanian Tiger pouch. It's used, uh, f the, I use this one to put gear accessories in it, like it has a few bags in it, a lot of laces and velcro straps if I could ever need some but I've got a second one a black one exact the exact same and uh, a lot of birds outside and this is my maintenance kit so actually when when you go to the field you will always need to have a certain kit if something happens with your weapon if, it's, if it's jammed or it doesn't work properly anymore I've got this entire kit of all the products. It's from Nupro. I bought this uh, Nupro maintenance kit. It has also some glue in it, oil, even some cables when I was still running an AEG. But I don't use that anymore as my weapon is now. Uh, HPA system. Uh, on each side I've got a single 5.56 Invader Gear Mac pouch and a vertical tag pouch 1 from Tasmanian Tiger also on this side and yeah the mag pouches it holds my mags and in these pouches they're not quick access that's not the point of them because I don't think I'm going to use them in the CQB area but uh, what do I've got in them shotgun shells zip ties even though I don't have a shotgun knives even a mouth mask damn coronavirus harsh time 
and on the back this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain but this is my Tasmanian Tiger tag pouch I think it was number 8 I'm not sure I'm going to put it in the video and it holds my Dai Proto tank for my HPA weapon um, Polar Star micro regulator and also Polar Star line I think it's 42 inch yeah 42 inch really basic but um, it's very sturdy good quality and it's uh, great to keep my weapon in power and I've also got this sling there's not much to say about it but it holds my weapon in place so this is attached through my right shoulder strap goes to the, through the top and back under my left armpit and yeah it's not, there's not much to say about it it's a budget um, sling but it does a great job it's mostly made out of nylon plastic based um, cotton all, oh, no, I don't know how to say it but you get the point and it holds my weapon so it, that I don't have to carry my weapon all the time I can, can just let it hang so this is my belt setup it's quite weird compared to other belt setups so as you can see it has quite a lot of pouches on it this is a Tasmanian Tiger LC laser cut like my paint carrier belt I'm going to take it off so you can see it a bit better so I'm going to start off at the front and on the front it has on both sides two storage slings from Tasmanian Tiger and you're going to tell me like why is it on a belt? Mostly these are used on a plate carrier to keep your weapon in place when used with a sling. But I use these to uh, keep my pants quite in place and it makes me move a lot better compared to without it. Because most um, milsim combat pants are a bit too low so these keep my pants a bit higher and I can move a lot better. Um, on the left side I've got a Kaitak holster. It's decent. It holds the weapon my like my high kappa, it's a high kappa holster. It holds it quite good in place, but I don't like the concept too much as it being a plastic uh, cheap plastic holster and it damages my frame a lot like I've said in the beginning of the video. And also quick drawing the pistol is not a great thing to do due to the system but overall it does a decent job on the back I've got two claw gear uh, mag pouches I will also uh, all the gear will be available in the description down below and a vertical no a horizontal tag pouch one and what I put in here I've got a compass some helmets accessories and most importantly spare uh, GoPro protection lenses because if I would be using my GoPro like this and someone shot on it the lens would probably be broken so it's really handy that I got these and also the storage slings are attached to the back of my pouch and on the right side I've got two Tasmanian Tiger SGL PL uh, MCL Mac pouches and these are great they hold my Max very good in place I'm going to show you so as you can see it has a very heavy GBB Mac uh, this is uh, Armor Works but that's not really the point the point is this is these are very good pouches as they don't fall out they stay very good in place and when I used to uh, use my speed QB setup I still use these pouches as the speed QB pouches then seem to hold my max good enough in place. Now I'm going to show you my gloves. These are my Mechanics Impact gloves. Like you see I've cut off the tips of my fingers and not because so I could access my phone and all those things a lot of way better but just being the gloves being too small. Yes I know like I, I, sh I could just buy other gloves but like I, I want expensive ones so I'm putting a bit of money to the side and I've also cut the velcro strap 
like these are medium I bought these in summer break 2018 and it's already 2021 now and I've got large already since 2019 damn I've spent a lot of time I should invest money in gloves oh well but they still do the job and I recommend these gloves due to having a lot of protection they're not that expensive 30, 36 euros not that much and has also a lot of protection inside and I literally tortured my gloves so yeah this is my invader gear combat shirt it's uh, in Marpat and I've got a few patches here and here and I also got this that's me tiger map this of I don't know how to call it but it's a great thing to keep maps in place I've got this map of the town where I live in and I used to put my iPhone 5c in it because it's small enough to put it in there and also a battery pack so if if I have phone, all these things I can charge it with this but at the moment there's nothing special to put in it and now going down to my legs these are my Miltec Marpot Marpot British accent I don't care uh, these are my Marpot uh, combat pants Richie 20 euros uh, keep my legs very warm and camouflaged like my Invader Gear combat shirt not much to say about it and down at the bottom these are my hikes boots these are from the Belgian military I got from my uncle these are already my third pair and I really love these there's not much to say about it because they're boots but yeah really great boots if you have access to these boots I would really recommend them just before I end this video, I just want to thank all my subscribers for staying at the channel due to the coronavirus having affected the channel a lot. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we couldn't make gameplay videos. And for this video, I wanted to wait for a big loadout video instead of making small reviews. And like you may have seen, it already has been 10 months since I've posted a video. But I want to thank all my subscribers for staying at the video. The end of the tunnel is near the coronavirus. Almost gone. It's almost gone. Pe people are being vaccinated so it's not going to be long anymore. Till we can all live our normal lives back again. So thank you for watching my video. I'll see you the next time.